Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser. In this video, we'll be looking at how to use the Android floating action button, as shown down here on this sample app I've got running. Plus, we'll be looking at how do we import a vector graphic from the Material Design Library easily into your system without having to download extra files. And as a bonus, we'll uh, switch to a new make it switch to an activity using the floating action bar. So, a button. So, let's get rid of that app and see what we want to do. Uh, first, I've got Android Studio here. I'm going to create a new project. We'll lock that through. I'm going to tell it I want to use a basic activity. It's the only one that actually has, well this one does too, uh, the, the floating action button. And it's going to give us a nice setup for the two XML files for activity. So in fact we're going to use this one even when we don't want the floating action button. Uh, let's go this one, uh, fob demo. FAB for floating action button. I'm going to select a fairly low Android compatibility level so we get lots of backwards compatibility. Um, and also it'll kind of let us do a few extra settings along the way. So we'll see that as we go. Okay, so let me just make it fit inside the window here. Now the first thing I want to do is sort of give you a quick tour of the files that it's going to give us by default. So, well the Bredo build finishes here. What it's done is it's given us one main activity, and there are three files associated with that. The one that we kind of need to do our programming in is going to be here, this main activity, and it's our Java code, as expected. The other two files actually define the XML layout. The first one is the activity.xml, and if I go and look at the design view, it looks like our activity, but so does this other one called content. It also looks like our activity. What it is if we look at the activity here, activity main, and if I look at the actual code, we can see that what it's going to do is it's going to set up some stuff at the top. It's then going to include this content main, this content main that's here, and then it puts on my floating action button. So the actual floating action button is defined here. This is a nice setup because the sort of the, the structure of the activity, the, the big things on top of it, are defined inside of activity main. And then what I would normally kind of put into my activity, so if I wanted a, a button or something like that, I'm going to drop it in here and so forth. So that's going to be, everything else is going to be onto here. But we're not really caring about what's going to happen on this activity. So to start with, let's go through and um, change the icon. First thing I want to do is change this icon on this. Now. The floating action button is actually in the activity main.xml, not the content. So let's go back up to that. And I'm going to do this graphically, just because that's the easy way to work. And let me make this a little bit bigger to give us more room to play. So I'm going to click on it to select it. If you can't click on it, it probably means you're in the content X, uh, main XML. And what I want to do is I want to change the icon. Now, if I just try to change the icon, there's only four here. That's not very uh, satisfying. So let's go and actually import from the Material Design Library. So I go to uh, right click on pretty much anything here. Um, I'm going to right click on, sh well, anything at all actually. I want to go New and then Vector Asset. So we're going to import a vector graphic from the icon library. Uh, here we have the Asset Studio, and we're going to tell it that we want to go from Clipart, which is going to pull it in from the web. So I'll click on the little Android man. And here are all the icons I've got in the material design. I can search for something, so if you wanted to do like Wi-Fi, here's a bunch of Wi-Fi icons. Uh, we're going to do an Add button, which I happen to know is under Add, and I just want this plus. So I'll say, OK, that's what I want. Click OK, bring it in. I don't even have to go to the web, download a bunch of files like we used to. This is just so much easier. Now we're going to come back to this in just a moment, but we'll see what we can do with this. So I'm going to click on Finish and pull it in. So it didn't change anything because I was just adding it to my library. Now if I go and I click on the image for the source, we can see that I've got now this new one, the plus sign that I brought in. So I'll click OK, and it puts it on here. Now that's close. I actually, I wanted it to be white, which is sort of the standard with these floating action buttons. So let's do that again. I'm going to bring in another vector graphic. So I'm going to go down to New, and then Vector Graphic. Uh, where it is? There it is, a Vector Asset. I want the same plus, but I want to change the color. So I click on color. I'm going to bring the slider up to bring the saturation up, the brightness, and I can pick any color I want. I want white, which is already selected. So I'm going to click OK. I could click OK now, but it then ends up naming it black. So I'm going to change the name of this thing to come in as white, which is sort of a standard that's also in the material design when you download files. 
click on next and then finish and it'll come in let's change that so under source compat the source that I want to bring in is this white one you can't see it very well in the little preview but we can see here on the right that's the white plus so okay and now that looks pretty much like what I was looking for okay so now let's go back and look at the, the XML because it turns out we're not quite where we need to be uh, if I look at the content pardon me oh yeah that's right no, I want the activity we can see here that it's giving me an error on this and it's telling me to use vector draw compat to, in order to make this work we have to enable a flag in the build system this is only true for things that are KitKat and earlier which is 4.4 uh, or API 19 we're trying to target a really old API level so we'll want to sort of enable this we can follow the hint here but suffice to say I want to go into my Gradle script and then under uh, pardon me for my module I want to pull in the right configuration file. If I go to the web, it'll have told me what to do. Basically, I just want to copy and paste in this block. So I'm going to put a comment on it. Uh, support vector assets on KitKat and earlier. And now that I've got this pulled in, if I go back to my main activity, oh, I need to resync and when it resyncs we'll see that this error goes away so that's gone away that's great let's see what we've got now I'm going to shift F10 this let's run my application switch over to my emulator which is running KitKat oh it wanted to uh, launch a different emulator apparently I'm not sure if I'm targeting the right level here there we go we can see my application came up. I didn't do much with the UI. They kind of all crashed in the corner. But we see at least I've got the plus icon here as expected. Okay, so now the last thing I want to do is like, let's, let's go through and uh, actually change what my floating action button is going to do for me. So for that, I need to go into my main activity code. Let's get rid of that on the bottom. The code that handles what the floating action button does is right here. So at the moment, if I go back into my app and I click on it, it tells me replace with your own action which is just the text that we've got right here so I could put in some other code here um, the big thing you're probably gonna want to do is maybe launch a new activity or maybe even a dialogue if you're adding something so let's go through and show how that's gonna work uh, before I do that though I want to show here this is in, in Android Studio it's showing me this as a lambda function and it's kinda hiding something so if I expand this it shows me the actual code that's sitting here, which is using an anonymous class that inherits from this uh, on-click listener. Java 8 brought in Lambda functions, so let's use it. We can't use it yet, though, because Android is not set up to default target Android or uh, Java 8. So if we go to Project Structure, and then under Modules, I can tell it I want to do source compatibility. This will be for my Java. I'm going to do 1.8 target compatibility. I'm going to say 1.8 as well. And OK, that's going to then enable all of Java 1.8 for me and now Android or Android Studio is like wait why are you using this on click listener you really want to make this a lambda function so I can make auto accept I'm going to alt enter replace with lambda and now it actually does the change over to a lambda function for me and here I'll like that um, I kinda like to have my curly braces in just so that I always have my curly braces and if I want to change it I can that's great. So now I've got my Lambda function. And it's going to work just as before. Uh, what am I missing here? I think I want one less of those and one more of these. There you go. So let's make this code actually do something useful for me. I'm going to make it create a new act or launch a new activity. So let's do that the right way. I'm going to say I want a new Android activity. And I'm going to tell it I want a basic activity, same type as we had before. And let's call this one uh, add a thing. Because you're launching it from the add button. And that looks all pretty good to me. It gives me the same structure as before with a content add to thing and an activity add to thing. Let's get rid of the floating action bar on the second one because we don't want that to add it. So I'm going to go down here. I could go in my design view. And I am now inside of the activity of add to thing click on it and delete it. The one other thing I need to do is go into my code 
for add the thing. And I need to get rid of this floating action bar. Because I just deleted the actual floating action button. I just deleted that from my layout. So get it rid of it from here. So now I've got an activity that has no floating action button and pretty much does nothing for me. But let's get on to this. So if I want to launch this activity, I need a way to get an intent. A great way to build the intent is to have the activity build it for you. So I'm going to create a public function, public static function that builds an intent. And I'm going to call this one make launch intent. And we need to provide a context. Let's call it context C. And let's put up a string message. So let's go string message. So let's just make it do something. We're going to pass it some data to work with. Uh, I need to build the intent. So intent, intent equals new intent. And then some of the parameters I want, I want to go down to the one that specifies the context. So pass it a context. And the last thing I need to do is what do I want to launch? I want to launch an add the ting dot class. And this will then allow me to uh, create the right sort of intent. Return intent. And the one last thing I want to do is I want to add in what it is I need to add an extra. So let's go intent dot add or put extra. And I can put in a bunch of stuff. I can put in, well, first it has to be, I have to give it some sort of name. Let's call this an extra dash message. We'll make that a constant in a moment. And then I can pass in a lot of the different primitives. I happen to have string as well, so let's add in the message that I passed in as my argument. Now this is just a magic string. I'm going to pull that out, so I'm going to right click on it and refactor. Uh, refactor, extract, and then it's going to tell me I want to extract a, we're going to add a field. Extract a field, and let's call this one hmm, extra message. And it's a private static final. Good enough from us. Private static final string message, extra message equals. That'll be better for us. So I now have an ability to build this intent. Let's go back to my main activity in my floating action button. I'm going to build the intent. So I'm going to say intent i is equal to. I need to call this as that's inside of my add thing. It's a static function, so I can call it direct. And then if I look at the arguments, I need to pass in a context. That's just context, which is this. I think I am good enough context. And then a string. So hello world, of course. And then I need to launch it. So I'm going to say i dot. Uh, what do I want to say here? Oh, I want to say start activity. And I could say start activity with result, but I just want to say start activity here because I don't care what's passing back. And start activity is good. In fact, I think instead of this, I probably want to pass in the activity. So that's going to be main activity dot this. I don't want to say just this because that would be inside of my anonymous class, potentially, if I was in an anonymous class. So we'll say we want to actually go with the main activities context. OK, so once I'm launching it, that is just going to make the activity run. Let's make it do something with that in a value. So here I'm going to uh, handle the extra. I need to get my intent, so that's going to be intent. Intent i is equal to get intent. That asks the activity for its intent that launched it. I'm going to say string message is equal to i dot get extra. Yeah, uh, wait, yeah, get string extra. And I need to now pass in the name of it. Well, I happen to made that a constant extra message. And let's do something with it. So we'll just toast it. Uh, toast dot make toast. I need to provide in a context. So that's going to be this. I need to give it the uh, res ID or the string. I haven't have the message here. The duration, which is toast dot, and let's make it up for a long time, and then of course I have to show it, otherwise nothing happens. Okay, so we're going to make the intent. We're going to launch the activity here from when I click on the floating action button. Let's see that all happen together. Gradle is building down here at the bottom. Nothing happened yet because I haven't clicked the button. I'll click the plus, and there's my new activity with Hello World popped up, which is what I passed in from my main activity.
And then from here I do all the usual things that I would normally do in an activity. Okay, thank you for watching. Check out my other videos on Android. And if you like it, go ahead and click subscribe or give it a thumbs up. Have a good day.